Hey, bye, Thomas here. Today we're out here on the sawmill. We're going to actually do some uh, swapping out of equipment that's been on the sawmill for quite a while. So this right here is a wiper system. This is the wiper system uh, that Gary Axon came up with and everything. A very cool alternative to running just straight water and stuff on your blade. It's a great way to uh, run a lubricant, aka diesel, bio lube, whatever that may be, through a wiper system. I am a big fan of the wiper system. I first used a wiper system when we owned a timber, a, excuse me, a Cooks MP32. Cooks MP32 is a great sawmill. One of the things I really liked about it was the wiper system. Well, long story short, Gary came out one of my sawmill shows many years ago. I think it was like the fourth sawmill show I ever did and everything. He drove from South Carolina over to Mississippi, came to that sawmill show. He also agrees with myself that the Timber King 2020 with the V1505 Kubota diesel is the best sawmill on the market. So we both agree with that. But there are things you can always improve upon on sawmills, one of which is the lubrication delivery system. The delivery system's good for water and stuff like that. However, if you run water, if you're in cold climates, and there's just a lot of pros and cons to it, but mostly I'll say cons. One of the things I really liked about this wiper system here is you're running just a little bit of fluid onto this and you're using the felt uh, to you know store all that liquid in there and everything and it wipes down the blade, gives you a clean surface to work with. And it's awesome, especially if you're dealing with really, really pitchy wood, uh, some of your pines, your yellow pines, your red pines, your white pines and, and such like that. Well, this right here is a prototype model. This is like one of his first designs right here. You know, of course, the first one was that he had on, on his mill. I think I got like the second or third one he ever made. But as you can see, it's a little bit different. But today, we're going to swap it out to the real dealio. This is what he's actually selling now. Uh, it's a very cool system. Uh, as you can see, I've used this one for over a year now. Uh, my felt pad's all nasty, and I, I had some things I added to the top here. Very minimal um, wearing on the felt itself. Uh, it's, it's pretty neat. You want this felt to be a pretty snug fit in there. And he actually has all these pieces and parts pretty much laser cut out now. So that's really freaking awesome. Um, we're going to take the old one off. Here's a new one. We'll kind of talk about a few little differences. There's not much change to it and everything, but when you buy one of these from Gary, you get two felt pads. I don't know of anyone that's actually worn out a felt pad. So that's pretty awesome. That he's thinking forward. Uh, make sure you don't lose this because this felt, that's actually one of the hardest things to get. It's a really high density industrial type felt. So this is going to be the actual, you know, reinstallation of this on here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the secondary wiper. I don't know if that'd be at the end of this video or the, the following video, but he makes this great wiper system, everything, uh, very similar to, I wouldn't say similar. It, it's, it works really well. It's not quite the exact same as the Cook's one. In fact, I think it's better than the Cook's wiper system. Um, I was a very big fan of it. Uh, if you've ever run diesel on your blade, you'll know there are benefits to that. There are also some disadvantages, but by using the felt, one of the big disadvantages with diesel and everything is it gets on everything, but by using this felt and doing a very, very slow drip onto this, you're not getting that atomized diesel all over the space. So without further ado, let's go and take this off. I had to get everything kind of cleaned out and I've still got some sawdust in there. I think I can get this in there. So it's half inch and Gary supplies pretty much everything with it. It's, it's pretty awesome. There is a lot of sawdust I got in the back here. <laughs> I was trying to uh, clean off the sawmill earlier with my blower. I gotta get some more stuff out of here. So let me, let me get some of the sawdust out here because what it is is where this and he's yeah where this nut is right here i've got sawdust compacted all around this and everything in fact this might yeah so half inch work in there um anyways he does have a modification which i'm going to do to this as well if you cut out a little bit on the back side of this yellow protector right here just a little bit it allows for sawdust not to build up in there but really if it does just like mine it's not a big deal so let's go ahead and get that cleaned out and we will get to taking this apart. Okay, so right here, this is the area that I was cleaning out. So one of the modifications that's been done is if you cut 
just a little bit of this back plane off right here, you'll, you won't you will get this sawdust build up in there. It's not really an issue because I'm running diesel and such. So if anything, that area there is going to be very well lubricated and the chance of something rusting in there, yeah, not really gonna happen. Might help if I go lefty loosey. All right, so. Now we're turning the right direction. We're cooking with grease here. Go ahead and take this thing off. And again, this has been on here for, I'd say about a year or so. It's worked very well for me. I have been very happy with uh, the amount of lubricant I am using by going through this felt pad and everything. It just, it, you use so little lubricant, it'll a little bit goes a long way. I mean, it's, it's, it's impressive. You know, if you're running diesel, you're running bio lube, whatever, you can get a long, you know, life out of the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The tank there. He's got a nylon nut on there and my fingers are cold right now. We've had some funky weather here in Wisconsin. There you go. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna use the same nut and everything, because that doesn't change. Because what I'm doing is I'm taking the prototype one off and going to give it to my dad uh, down there in, in Tennessee to put on his mill. Because there's nothing wrong with it other than really the, the change in color. So we're gonna kind of look at these two side by side. So, I know it's not the best angle. Let me back that up. Okay. So you could see prototype model, actual model. The sizes, they're pretty much the same. The only thing I'm seeing different is that the new red one's a little bit taller. Everything else appears to be pretty much the same. Very cool, very cool. And you can see at some point, I guess I had, I was pushing pretty hard on a cut there and I, it looks like it rubbed up against there a little bit. But yeah, overall, I've been very, very happy uh, with the, uh, the performance of this wiper system. Anyone who's run this, I mean, they'll they'll agree too. Like Gary has a great product there. So we've added that. I said I'm just gonna reuse the hardware because the hardware remains the same, and I don't have to try to take this thing out and throw it back on there with my cold hands because whenever I drilled my hole on the bottom side, I did it really really freaking tight so I had to thread that essentially that bolt through there but yeah Gary asked me he's like hey can you change out to the uh, the new red one because it really stands out vice the black one I said not a problem and you know Gary's super cool since I was I guess one of the initial testers, he's like, I'll just send you a new one. I'm like, awesome. But again, I love seeing people in the Timber King community reaching out, coming out with great uh, great ideas on how to improve upon an already great, you know, sawmill or system that's out there. And Gary has done an absolute ton of work on his sawmill. Check out the video I did a couple months back. Went down to Florida, or, uh, yeah, I was down in Florida working a job, but I drove up one weekend up to South Carolina. Got to meet Gary and his family and everything and had a great time out there. Got to see all the new additions he's added to his mill, but the guy doesn't stop. He's always adding more. He's done so much to his sawmill. He's, like I said, he's got the most modified sawmill timber king sawmill on the market especially a 2020 
Put the new felt in. Nice snug fit. And there you go. Very easy install. Essentially, uh, not a lot of work required to do this install. Let me go ahead and change views real quick. Okay, so everything's installed. Fit up looks great. And it stands out. It really stands out. That's one of the things that Gary's like, hey, can you put this out there so people can see that you have this? Because mine, it really blended in uh, with the black there. You really couldn't tell it was there. But now everyone's going to see, what's that red thing on there? Well, that red thing there, that's what Gary added to this to make this a... Uh, better functioning machine, which already functions great and everything. And all I do is just slow drip my, you know, lube onto there. And right now I'm using bio lube and everything. That right there, as the blade passes through, will wipe it down, leaving a mirror shine on it as it cuts. And I'm very happy with that. Uh, step two is this right here. So I just I got this the other day and everything. This is the additional secondary wiper system which goes on that side over there so as you see i do have some build up and stuff on my wheel well this right here which is going to mount to uh looks like the uh the frame over there that's pretty cool so he has it uh, looks to be like an aluminum block there on the bottom everything very similar look the exact same red shape and everything but the pad is different on that side on this side it's actually like a scotch uh, like a Scott Brillo pad or whatever, a little coarser material, and that's good. And I've also seen where if you put this close enough, the belt, if you put a B57 belt on there, it's got a little bit of slop, it actually might clean your belt off too. But uh, really that's not the intent. The intent is to make sure that no uh, pitch or anything builds up on your blade. A blade that has pitch building up on it is a blade that has heat building up onto it. And also, it can cause your blade to run kind of funky if you've got a lot of buildup on the on the you know the blade on the inside of the blade. I've seen pitch ridden blades do some weird things, dips and dives and stuff like that. Um, and this right here is just a whole nother thing added onto the sawmill that will keep your system running as clean and as true as possible. So I'm very anxious to get that on there today. We're, we are losing some uh, sunlight. I'll probably swap it on tomorrow so that I continue to have content for tomorrow too. But uh, yeah, this will be the next install. So quick little video, swap this over. Very excited to uh, be supporting Gary with his uh, endeavors on all these modifications to his sawmill. So please check out that video. I'm gonna to try to put a link at the end of this video. I wanna, you know, I'm improving my editing skills and stuff like that. I just watched some stuff on how to do that. So maybe you'll see the video right there where I talk about the most modified Timber King 2020 out there and it'll go over some of the other modifications that Gary done that Gary has done to his mill. Like one of which drives me crazy is that these fenders, yeah, they're not the strongest or anything. But again, they're not they're not made to be. They're made to be, you know, keep water from spraying all over the place and making this thing uh, legal on the road. However, Gary built one that's super heavy duty metal. Whenever you take a board off, you can put a board here as well as you put a bracket that ties into uh, that one over there. And long story short, you can put a board there, nice solid platform. Another thing he's done is he added on a, a really cool step system onto uh, the actual frame of the sawmill. But again, check that video out. It's a great video. Had a great time uh, working with Gary on that one. So here's another thing. I added this because of Gary too. This is sound dampening material. You know how quiet that is compared to not. A uh, great way to reduce sound on your sawmill. Cheap and expensive. Uh, very cool. But anyways, uh, please like, subscribe. A lot of cool things going on in the channel. Uh, we've got some goofy weather here, like I said, but I'll be able to run the sawmill here. It's not going to be like negative four degrees or anything like it was like last year. We only had one truly cold week here. The rest of our time here and this winter in Wisconsin has been pretty mild. So, all right, we'll see you around. Thanks.